Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So, guys, please do, if you haven't, and you're so inclined, uh, we would love to have you join us over on Patreon. Uh, basically for less a dollar or less a month exclusive videos and it does help us support the channel i've seen you know some comments on, on evolutionary uh from people about information should be free but you know can you work for free and survive in this world the answer is uh, unless you're totally self-sufficient no so you know we spend all day dedicated to our work all day double digits hours every day absolutely we definitely uh pull information from our hearts i mean it's already there in hopes that we can help someone find the information that they need from their heart and hopefully if we help them do better then maybe this is a way that people can give back and we are very grateful for all of your guys' support in any form yeah, absolutely. As it does push back against the system, because, you know, if the system didn't demonetize issues and, and subjects that they don't want being covered, oh, yeah, we, we wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> we wouldn't be doing the Patreon uh, in a uh, pay platform. But the fact that it is, uh, it, it forces us to adjust. And, and we're thankful that there's so many people that understand there should be an energy exchange. And again, the money system will go away at some point in time. That'll be a blessing. But for now, we, we thank you guys for your support. We did this video a while ago. Um, and it is, it, it's one of my favorites in some ways. About a year ago here, I think it was a little bit more than that. They tend to round things off. The dark power structure, Anunnaki, Draco, Jin, how they feed on humanity, thought forms. Oh, yeah, these beings are very real. These are depictions of what we would call a jinn. And yes, absolutely, they are very, very real. We could share that with you as we have seen them uh, firsthand ourselves, and we've shared that with you guys. This is uh, what we would firmly believe is a jinn. And this was taken in Mississippi, in the Hattiesburg area of Mississippi. These poor uh, goats and sheep that are watching this were slaughtered by, we believe it, this thing. Slaughtered this whole flock. And it was right across from where we are camping. Our regulars know and remember this as we've done multiple videos on this. Absolutely. What what you are looking at, in my humble opinion, is absolutely a jinn. And in Islam, it is said Allah created the jinn and also humans. And we'll go into that. As you can see, it looks to be a, a humanoid figure made out of fire. And it moved. And all these animals, which were staring at us from the other side of this pond, uh, in which we, we love to see, we, we love the animals, were slaughtered uh, brutally. And uh, Cindy wants to mm -hmm. add to that. And that was really such a frightful thing because we were doing a video and we were videotaping where you guys are looking and we didn't pick it up with our two eyes. You know, this this is something that was picked up on the camera and we didn't see it until later and it was actually quite horrific when we found out that those sheep's um, goats were slaughtered that that was a rough day absolutely so i'll put the link for this video in there and i just wanted to go over some things again uh you know it's interesting when moses encounters uh well what he takes to be god and the whole burning bush phenomenon uh, again, uh, Moro Bellino, who was a Vatican translator, did a really good job in God to the Bible, showing how this is truly, a, a, it's a mistranslation. Yes, there was a fire. It's not really a burning bush, per se. Uh, it is a fire that seemed as if it you couldn't quench it. It couldn't be put out. It was burning with no obvious fuel source. And, you know, I, I mean, if, if you think about gin, yeah, kind of looks like a fire with no obvious fuel source. 
and it's burning. But, you know, again, you know, what's burning? It's, many would say this is a fire elemental. It, It sort of is, absolutely. And so, you know, and even when Moses hears, uh, take off your shoes for you're on hallowed ground, that word hallowed and holy is a mistranslation. And really it comes from the word that means this, this ground is set apart only for the Elohim. That's what the literal translation is. It's set apart for the Elohim. Humans are not allowed to come here. Ah, because again, when you look to the Sumerian history, each Sumerian deity had its own city-state, its own patron city-state. And it's interesting, too, because one thing I was meaning to look up for this uh, and share with you guys, again, Abraham came from Ur, Ur of the Chaldees. And so if you look to the patron deity of Ur, uh, you might find uh, that it, it won't state Yahweh, but again, there are multiple names being used by different tribes for the same beings. Mm-hmm. And there are so many different names, so many different translations. And when when someone puts their entire life, their entire selves into a belief system, a religion, you know, and it's only fair that we go through it if we're going to say something about it we go through it and we take you on the very same path that we have gone on where we learned that the information provided is not the information to be (laughs) taken at face value because it's been altered about oh a hundred times or so and i just looked this up for you guys because i already know the answer the mesopotamian moon god sin was the patron deity of ur Sin, or Nana, Nanar, Sin. Isn't that interesting? That word, Sin. Oh, we're going to go more into this. But again, Abraham came from Ur. Ur was a place in Mesopotamia. Ur was, is, is basically home base for those beings that we call the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki. And, and you know, the Bible's all about sin, right? Mount Sinai, Mount Sin is and I, sin, and I, two words, right? And also known as Jabal Musa in Arabic. You know, again, one of the things we were having a great discussion was, you know, Matthew, Mark, John, Luke. (laughs) And I remember the old, um, oh God, the old movie Blazing Saddles, Blazing Saddles, sorry, when he's going, now we're going to quote from the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Duck. <laughs> Incoming. Yeah. Oh, gosh. You got to laugh at it. So, uh, again, you know, this is Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai, Sinai. Again, the place that Moses received the Ten Commandments, right? Uh, you know, Mount Sin. If you look to it, whose mountain is this? This is the Mount mountain of the moon god nanar sin the mesopotamian anunnaki uh, entity known as sin oh you know it you can't make this stuff up uh and there's the other thing that gets confusing is again oh people will say the bible is perfect there's no contradiction there's a million contradictions you know there's a million corrections uh maybe not a million but we're we're in the thousands and literally we are in the thousands so you know there's different locations given for this in the burning bush again and it depends people understand biblical scholars understand we're, we're looking at the elohist tradition the deuteronomist tradition and, you know, they, they do differ. And, you know, again, just read this wiki and I won't you know bore you guys with it. But again, the Yahwist, the Priestly, the Elohist, the Deuteronomist. Yeah, you have conflicting stories a lot of times. And it's to be understood when in Hebrew they didn't put any of the vowels in there. Can you imagine taking a war and peace, taking out all the vowels and then trying to get the story right? Hello, you know, it's not going to work. It's not. Oh, yes, they took this seriously. Yes. And they also adjusted it on the fly as they went, as their needs went. And this is just part of the big reveal. The other part 
is I. You have sin. Who is sin? Well, again, sin is a Sumerian deity. And it happens to be the god of the moon. The other part, I. I is interesting because I literally means rubble because uh, it is in reference to a town that was basically inhabited by the Canaanites, the original inhabitants when Israel came in, or it could be translated as the ruin, because they committed genocide there and destroyed uh, every person. It is interesting, and uh, gosh, which book was that now? Um, Chronicles or Kings, it's about Saul. And God is, <clears throat> again, when, every time we say God, we're mistranslating. It, we really are, because we if, if, if we're going to be specific, uh, we need to be specific. And so, you know, when Yahweh's mad, when Yahweh is irritated with Saul, because why? Because he didn't kill every last woman and child in a particular town. So then he brings about uh, Saul's demise and exalts David because he will. <laughs> it's just that simple. You know, uh, as I've shared with you guys, my mom used to say, I don't read the Old Testament. I don't like that God. I only like the God I find in the New Testament, specifically in the Beatitudes. Because again, you can see that it's it's a very different language. And, and again, when the Pharisees and the Sadducees came up to Yeshua Jesus and he confronted them saying, your God's not my God. Yeah, you know, because this this is part of the big reveal. So again, these people were absolutely destroyed and, and yeah, genocide was committed. And, you know, where is this area? It's the same area we're having all this stuff going on right now. You know, it, it's again, it's the modern Baton in the West Bank. The West Bank and Gaza, which are getting bombed as we speak. It never stops. Sin, Sumerian, you know, Mesopotamian. Sin is, is is the god of the moon. And so, you know, that is interesting, is it not? It's the moon. It has been, and some have said, oh, no, the moon's not really the sign of Islam. But why do we see crescent moons everywhere in Islamic mosques? How many crescent moons have you seen depicted as the sign of Islam? It's everywhere. And again, so, you know, does that mean that Allah and really Yahweh are, are on the same team? Are they even the same sort of being? Is this really uh, a continuation and, and all? And, and this really hit me, too, because I was thinking about the ring of, the fi ring of fire. Look at this and look at the crescent moon. Yeah, the crescent moon, you know, again, the re reflecting the light of the sun and all. But it's about the moon. What does the moon do in an eclipse? It blocks out the light of sun. The sun is light from source, the real God, the real God with the big G, which can't be named because anytime you go and name something, uh, well, again, I would strongly recommend uh, people reading the Tao Te Ching. It, it's a real work of, of wisdom, and there's so much in there to give understanding or, you know, again, read into uh, some explorations in consciousness, like the Yoga Sutras, that's real spirituality. It, it really is. It's not fear-based, you better do or you're going to be punished, young man or young lady. Mm -hmm. You know, there's also a very beautiful, peaceful, simple book called The Four Agreements. If you're really wanting to study and understand and soak in some wisdom, this is something that I think is very, very helpful for anyone and everyone. And, and it's, it, it doesn't um, dismiss anyone. It, it's like these uh, other reading materials that we mentioned, they are not uninviting anyone. They are inviting everyone to uh, come and absorb some of the consciousness, some of the wisdom, some of the peace that this life has to offer. But I, I am a little curious. I I'm not sure I haven't studied uh, Islam and I don't know what the mainstream says about the crescent what what does mainstream Islam say that crescents for I think again you're gonna find different answers depending on who you're talking to again there's Sunni and Shia and there's uh, other smaller sects as well and, and it depends on, on who you're asking uh, there's all these different levels of depths of scholarship and we were discussing today, like if all you ever watched, 
and all you ever did was like listen to people uh, like Charles Stanley, Chuck Swindoll, Hal Lindsey. Um, I don't even know who's out there now, but you know all these mainstream <clears throat> preachers. You're not really doing uh, a, a deep, in-depth study. You're just getting what the salespeople are going to want to give you. You know, because again, televangelism is huge money, huge money. You, you got to go in de- in depth and really look into you know how these things were constructed and how they came about. So, the word. Islam means surrender, specifically surrender to the will of the one God called Allah in Arabic. And so, you know, it looks at itself as the culmination of Judaism, Christianity, and then it is the culmination. So, you know, this literally means submit to uh, the will of Allah, which again is given to one from Muhammad. And again, you're going on secondhand uh, evidence of that too you know who is muhammad have you actually met him no you haven't you it's a faith don't you got to take it on faith okay but how well do you really trust everything that's written especially when you go in in depth and you start to understand how these things were put together allah arabic name for the supreme being as you see here, 1702, al-ha, from Arabic, Allah, contraction of a-illah, literally, the God, from the al, now al and el, again, ilah, Hebrew, Eloah, again, comes from El elohim This is coming from the same root. This is coming from the same root. So what are you really saying? And this is a really uh, a, a, a pretty well done uh, deep dive into where does it come from again? It's the linguistics of it. And, uh, you know, this is John Andrew Morrow. It's, it's a contraction. And, and again, it comes down to understanding how the linguistics were put together as we've said before, you know, somebody in, say, Los Angeles is going to say things differently than somebody in Ireland or Scotland. Even though they're speaking English, they're going to say it in a different way. And yeah, and sometimes we, we will not understand each other. So we got to go down into the roots. We have to go into the roots and, and to understand where they come. And, you know, here, Aleph, Lam, He. And what it is coming from is the same. And as we, you have seen, um, you've seen contractions. You understand contractions, how, ro- how words get contracted and all. Baal, Baal, Baal. And, and again, that's also um, how it's used linguistically with A-L as, as opposed to the English E-L. But really what we're going from and understanding, uh, again, what we have today as far as the language of, of English. If we were listening to somebody that was writing, and we did this back in, in grade school. Uh, remember Canterbury Tales? Remember Chaucer? Uh, you can't understand what the heck they're saying. You know, and, and if you go back 500 years ago and listen to somebody speaking English in London, we probably would only be picking up little bits and pieces. We'd be wondering, what are they talking about? But this isn't that hard to understand because, you know, again, this is a contraction, but we're talking about the same words. So there are obvious linguistic and etymological connections between the respective words for God and these closely related Semitic languages. For example, Allah, Allah, and Elo, being related to Ilah, Il, and El. Remember El and Elohim, again from the Bible, and then you have Yahweh. El and Elohim, El the singular, just kind of a generic God, Elohim, the gods, the mighty ones, the powerful ones. He concludes that the Semitic names for God, Allah and Elohim, they're exactly the same. So again, you're using the same term. There's there's no difference. And originally, this is used in the plural. So, you know, this is the thing that I saw uh, a tweet by uh, Michael Yan. And again, using pagan in a derogatory manner, 
without and and he does do good work. He's down there in the Darien Gap, and he's he's exposing a lot of the infiltration that's going on. Uh, yeah, at the same time, he he's he's just totally in the dark when it comes to this because he's he's not understanding that Judaism, Islam, and Christianity have pagan roots. It's just what the uh, what the scribes have done, what the more modern day authors have done to obscure those pagan roots and take these individual beings, jumble them up into one amalgamation, and thus all you get is Lord and God instead of distinctions between multiple different beings. Well, when I when now when I look at any biblical texts or something like this and I see the word lord or god it's just automatically it translates in my head now like which alien deity are you going to assign a name to because there's so many there's so many alien deities and all of this is written with the idea that you know whoever it's talking about is the chosen people but with our discussion with a very beautiful family member today she reminded me of the question that you know i i wish i could ask but I, you know, I don't like to rock the boat, but this is a legitimate question. When we have a certain belief system and they label it, you know, whether it be um, just Christian or whatever, how come that one religion thinks that they are the absolute best? And you go to the next one and they say they're the best and then, then they're the best and the only one and the only right and the only true one. And I started asking myself this when I was in this little bitty town, not, you know, I don't know, five or 600 people. And there's like five churches and each church with a different label claiming that theirs is the only truth. So (laughs) you just, I mean, you can't help but start asking questions. Absolutely. You know, so this is what we, what we have here. It's a distortion. And so, you know, again, uh, Muhammad received his um, vision, supposedly, or his conversation with what's taken to be the Archangel Gabriel over here at, at Jabal al-Nur. And, you know, this is a mountain, a cave in, in, in Sinai, uh, in Surah. Surah, you know, when you look at the chapters, there are 114 surahs in the Quran. And... Sora means chapter, but immediately I hear this, Sora, Sora. It gets me thinking of Devas versus the Asuras. I mean, because phonetically it sounds like that, Sora, Asura. Well, you know, who are the Asuras? The Asuras are demons. (laughs) Somebody said, somebody gave us the comment, oh, the original sin is when man started worshiping Lucifer and Satan. Well, you know, I'll, I'll make the blunt statement, and, 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 you know, this is not popular, but that's exactly what two-thirds of the world is doing right now. It's literally worshiping the adversary of humanity, and they don't understand it. The Asuras are a class of beings that are in service to, to themselves. They're power-seeking, uh, power-hungry demons, in some ways related to the more benevolent devas. Now, the reason that you, they're taken to be related to is because all these beings came from the sky. All these beings have advanced technology, advanced understanding of how the, the universe runs. They were all taken to be, quote unquote, gods, the good, the bad, the whole lot of them. But there were those that came and taught us uh, how to get along peacefully, uh, taught us how the universe works. And there were those that taught us worship us, do what we say. Uh, or you'll be punished and did punish humanity. So the easy way to look at it is, is the religion about service to God? If it's about service to God, if it's about humans being created to be slaves, then that's the asuras, that's the demons. If it's about, hey, you know, you have source within you, you yourself uh, are a representation, a fractal of source, and you're unique, so be yourself. Do things your own way, uh, and just understand that you know the more closer we want to get to source, we act out of love and compassion. 
And this is exactly what's what's taught in those mystery traditions in the West because they had to go into hiding and many of the other traditions in the in the East. So again, the wars of the Soras versus the Devas, another word for the Devas that's used is Devi, yeah, Devi. And they take Devi, who are the benevolent ones, and turn them into devils. Why? Well, because the world is run by the devils, the demons. The, the mainstream religious systems are about giving energy to the demons, to the jinn. And, and this is the reality. The moon was brought here many, many years ago by two reptilian brothers. Uh, yeah, this is coming from Africa. The Greeks also uh, had spoke of Apollonius of Rhodes, rem- remembers the, uh, mentions the time when not everything was currently in its place and many different races came into existence when you look at the two uh, the deny uh yeah isn't that interesting the deny the tuatha de danan and there's a tribe of well there's a, a god in india denu and and there's one also in ireland these are different extraterrestrial species that have been here. Again, when we're outside of the Dark Age and, and in the very near future, there will be many different extraterrestrial sp- species coming and going openly. The only reason they don't is because of the dark control system that's in place that wants you to think there's nobody else but humans here, demons, angels, and one God. You know, and the the disturbing but unfortunate truth of it all is Whoever put these belief systems, these books together, were absolutely not human, but they have a good understanding of human behavior. Now, how could that be? I mean, this is just too vast. The information is too widespread for any particular human to put it together. But then we also have this other aspect that's coming into play lately. And we have a lot of AI. And at the top of this control structure, we have this AI dragon that I've seen that shows itself to me. I'm not saying dragons are bad, but this isn't, it's a black AI dragon. That's how it shows itself. Uh, it wants to be seen as all powerful. <clears throat> and I, I know that thing is pulling strings down through the control structure, through the control grid. And look at how many people are blindly following. I think that's what's disheartening. Absolutely. So again, you know, the world is led astray. And it is the, the fundamentalist belief systems of, of both Islam and uh, Christianity and, and others as well. But these are the main ones. These are over 60% of the population of the planet have these systems as the lens that they look at everything through. And it has affected our society in a, in a big, big way. Uh, it, it's just interesting to see this. Again, the, the term proselines literally means before the moon. And they even talk of uh, the, uh, where was it here? Okay, Aristotle wrote uh, that Arcadia in Greece, before being inhabited by the Hellenes, or the modern Greeks, had a population of Pelagesians, and that these were these Aborigines occupied the land already before there was a moon in the sky above the earth, and also a time before even Jove, 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 Zeus, Z- you know, Jupiter, Jehovah. Uh, again, you know, this is the big deception. The big deception is that you know the masses, the mainstream fundamental point of view is feeding the dark control structure and you know that's a big one (laughs) that's a huge one so again thank you guys as always for your support hope you found this interesting uh we could do uh non-stop videos like this uh, every single day there's just so much uh to share source bless and namaste namaste